Um, okay, uh, thank you. And uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, members of the ZBA. My name is Rob Champetti. I'm the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals, and I want to welcome you this evening to our intimate little hearing room. We um, we seem overly formal because we're, uh, A, because we unfortunately have to be, but uh, we also are broadcasting simultaneously uh, in what remains to be the last vestige of the hybrid days uh, during and post COVID, but uh, nonetheless, we maintain sort of a hybrid uh, online and offline presence for at least the time being. So um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just get things started based on the agenda that you may have seen online. If not, everything is followable online and it's being broadcast up on the screen. Uh, we follow the flow of the evening based on the meeting agenda. And I, uh, I start by opening the meeting, which is this evening, um, May 9th, 2023, because we publish legally at 7 p.m. as a start time. Uh, and all the butter notices and all the legal notices, we um, unfortunately sit here politely gazing upon each other until that appointed moment, and then we can actually say words out loud and begin the uh, business of the evening. I begin by uh, introducing the board, the members, and others in the room, um, and then we will go through um, a roll call to establish what's called a quorum for those already familiar. In order for us to conduct the business of the Zoning Board of Appeals this evening or any evening, based on the agenda, we must have at least a uh, five member board present. And so we establish a legal quorum, which is, you know, uh, lays the basis by which we can go further and, and have the business, conduct the business of the evening. Um, I will designate as is required the five legal voting members. That is, um, that may alternate. I state that on the record. So anyone in the room and anyone listening online knows exactly who is the legal voting member of any given application. That does change based on recusals, conflicts of interest, absences, uh, and such. So to make it clear, we, we say that out loud, but there's no surprises. Um, I'd like to also then just go through a quick flow of how to expect the business of the evening to go. Um, there's, a, um, there's a tempo and flow of how a zoning board is conducted. If you've been to other public hearings, um, different boards have different um, you know, styles and rigor. Because we're a quasi-legal administrative board, uh, we are a little bit more tethered and beholden to these sort of formal strictures, this, this formality. I try to keep it as informal, formal as possible, but I always like to sort of give the lay of the land so that, you know, uh, as my grandfather used to say, you know, you tell them what you're going to tell them, then you tell them, then you tell them what you told them. And if you can, you know, follow that, uh, you know, that formality, uh, you know, people have an idea of what to expect. So it's with that in mind that um, I just give you a quick intro and overview. I'm going to begin by calling the roll and, and uh, we'll establish our quorum. I'll then just walk through for everyone's benefit um, how we will flow in the format this evening. We have two matters that are on the agenda that are both under a request from the applicant to continue. In case anyone's here on those matters, we always like to get those out of the way first and continue them so that no one's stuck uh, waiting around for uh, for a hearing that doesn't happen. And then we'll follow the uh, the organizational structure of what's on the agenda in that order. So um, beginning with the uh, roll call, uh, members of the ZBA, please kindly respond with either here or present. Um, Mr. Stephen Blatt. Here. Mr. Ken Swan. Here. Mr. Walter Butchan. Here. Mr. Gregory Bennett. Yes, here. Uh, Ms. Lynn Scow, we know, is absent. Um, Ms. Patricia Petter. Here. And Rob Champetti, I'm here. That is one, two, three, four, five, six present, um, one absent. The uh, five voting, and that is a, a legal quorum, so we can uh, we can go ahead and conduct our business this evening. Um, the five voting members this evening will be myself, Mr. Delisle, Mr. Swanton, Mr. Channon, um, and Mr. Benick, uh, and Ms. Patricia Pecknick will step in on one application for which one of our members, uh, Mr. Channon, has um, a uh, must recuse himself. That's 28 Charles Street. So uh, Patricia Pecknick, our, our associate member, will be the vote, the fifth voting member on that application. Uh, when we get to it, um, I'll just we'll just make that note on the record as well that um, one of our members is recusing. Uh, so with that, um, allow me to just quickly introduce the, uh, the board members and then we'll get into the business of this evening. Um, we have to, uh, to my immediate left, Mr. Ken Swanton, uh, Mr. Walter Channon to his left, Mr. Gregory Benick uh, to, uh, to his left. Then we have Ms. Uh, Caitlin Sullivan, our city planner, and Andy Port, our, um, uh, our planning director. Uh, and across the table, the uh, fearless and uh, tireless Ms. Gretchen Joy, our keeper of the minutes. Um, I usually pause here just with respect to one of the, one of the uh, frames of this evening, when we get to it with each application with the public comment section. 
During public comment, Ms. Sullivan will put up a slide that just reminds us of the rules of the road of public comment. We ask with you know discretion and flexibility that everyone kindly keep any uh, comments to within two minutes, more or less. We do that out of a courtesy so that everyone can speak. Um, you do not have to fall into a pro and con column. Um, you, you may, if you wish, uh, say that you are for or against an application, but feel no obligation to do that. Just simply speak, give your name and your address for uh, for Miss Joy. She'll be keeping. She has the 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 unfortunate task of having to write down everything every one of us says. So so kindly just give your name and address so that um, uh, Miss Joy has that information, and then just speak your mind. And we you know we give great discretion on uh, public comment, but we ask you to govern yourselves you know with that same currency. Um, and uh, coming uh, coming around to my um, to my immediate um, to my immediate right, we have um, Mr. Stephen Delisle and then Ms. Um, Patricia Pecknick. And again, my name is Rob Champetti as chair. So with that, uh, we will get into our public hearings, and we'll start with the two matters. The first of which uh, is a request for a continuance. It's 68 High Street, Travis and Sarah Summer, care of Lisa Mead Retail and Costa LLC. This is a matter continued from. April 11th, 2023, it's a special permit for non-conformities. And I don't think there's anyone to speak in connection with the request. So members of the DBA, we just have the applicant's uh, legal representative requesting a further continuance. Uh, any comment or any, um, or do we have a motion to continue? I'd like to make a motion to continue the special permit for non-conformities for 69 High Street, which is number 23-5 to June 13th of 2023. And that's the requested date by the applicant and we have that space in our docket. Great, motion is made to continue the matter to June 13th. Um, can we have a second? I'll second. Great, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Motion is made, um, uh, made by Mr. Swanton, seconded by Mr. Channon. Uh, following the roll of the motion to, um, to continue, uh, we will go, uh, Mr. Swan. Yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Mr. Dwight. Yes. Ms. Peckman. Yes. Rob mm -hmm. Petty, I vote yes. That's five in the affirmative. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five. That's six in the affirmative. The ayes have it. Motion carries. Matters continued to that date. Um, next is uh, Tucker and Haley McCarthy, the owners of the property as managers of Overlook Holdings LLC. This again is care of Lisa Mead, uh, Mead Tellerman and Costa LLC. Um, and this is continued from that same date, 4 11, 2023. Also, a special permit for non conformities. Motions may uh, the uh, applicant request continue to 6 13. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion, yeah. make a motion to continue the special permit for non conformity at 31 Orwalk Street to 523 and uh, VNC 23 8. Oh, 523. My apologies. I said 613. That's a different date. Great. Uh, motion's made to continue to uh, 523 22, uh, 23. Uh, do you have a second? Second. Mr. Bennett, thank you. Uh, motion's made and seconded. Calling the roll on the uh, motion to continue to 523. Mr. Swanton? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Delisle? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Rob Champetti, I vote yes. That's six in the affirmative. The ayes have it. Motion carries. Matter is continued to 523 23. Um, we'll jump into now the uh, first. Of the two full hearings that we have and just again as i promised earlier um ladies and gentlemen we um the flow of an nezba hearing begins with myself reading the legal uh the legal notice that's the published legal notice that would have been published and mailed to a butters um, i read that by the applicant's name or representative name the property address and the description of the relief being sought by the applicant and by that i mean we will say out loud whether the applicant seeks a special permit a special permit for nonconformity, some variance, et cetera. And then finally, as a, as a you know, sort of a, a natural, real language descriptor, I'll, I'll simply describe uh, what the applicant seeks to do so that one needn't have to be, God forbid, a lawyer or worse to uh, understand what the applicant is asking for. Um, and by that, I'll say that the applicant seeks, you know, permits to extend or expand uh, a porch or, you know, demolish an existing room and, and what have you. So it'll be very clear in real language what exactly the applicant seeks. After I read the legal notice, we open the floor to the applicant or the applicant's representative to speak and present the application. Uh, Ms. Sullivan will be walking through any slides and materials, all of which is online. Anyone online that's uh, watching as well um, has the opportunity to see these same slides. Um, so that anything being referenced is put up on that board so that anyone online or here in the room can see it. Um, we then will go through, uh, and once the applicant uh, finishes the presentation, we'll close that portion of the public hearing, and that's when we go to uh, public comment. And as I mentioned earlier, there'll be a slide, just given the rules of the road, we ask you to you know, exercise courtesy and discretion. We're sure everyone will, and we 
we we never have a problem with that. But um, we extend you know extra time when it's appropriate, and we um, we want to hear from anyone who has any comments. Just raise your hand, give us your name and address, uh, and speak in mind. Once we go through everyone in the room with a raise of hands, I will uh, go through anyone online who is virtually raising your hand, and if anyone's online listening, um, the way to do that is to simply virtually virtually raise your hand on Zoom and we will see your hand, we will recognize you, and then we'll unmute your mic, we'll ask you to do the same. Um, once we get through public comment, uh, we then close that portion of the public hearing and we go to questions from the board. Members of the ZBA will ask questions um, of the applicant, applicant's representatives, uh, and um, we'll go through every member that has questions and we'll try to get all of those addressed. Once we've finished that round robin of questions from the board, if any, we close that and go to the final portion, which is deliberations. This is the, um, the you get to hear us think and, uh, and toil out loud on the legal criteria that is required to be found by the Board of Appeals um, on any element of relief that's being sought. So if the applicant seeks a variance, there's certain legal criteria, we will say what that is. Uh, and then you'll hear the board members deal with the deliberation of whether that the applicant has met that burden and if so why if not why not etc the board members may board members may have additional questions and we uh, we cross those bridges as we as we come upon them uh, once we have gone through deliberations uh, we will close that portion of the public hearing and um, we I then uh, entertain a motion uh, from any member of the board, you will hear the motion in the form of a motion to approve. Uh, that doesn't mean the, app, the board member is going to support the application or plans to vote in favor of it. It's just simply under Robert's rules of order. The matter is made in the affirmative. So you will hear a motion to approve, and then that motion is seconded. That just places it on the floor for a vote. We then take a vote, um, and in order for an application to be successful, it has to receive four votes of yes. And uh, as I mentioned, we have five, five voting members, so four have to vote in the affirmative. If that happens, the motion carries and the application is approved. And essentially, that is the that is the the exhausting lay of the land. So I apologize for that detail, um, but I also thank you for your uh, your indulgence. So with that, we'll go to the first application. This is the application of Derek uh, Lively, twenty on behalf of twenty eight Charles Street, Unit B. This is a variance. Uh, the applicant seeks a special permit for non conform uh, actually, this is not a variance. Is this a special permit for non conformities? Right. No. Yeah. Apologies. Um, that's my mistake. Uh, this matter is a special permit for non conformities uh, based on a revised zoning determination. Uh, the applicant seeks to construct a single family addition to the rear of, of an existing non conforming structure with a lot, uh, with a lot with two single family structures. Prior expansion of lot coverage and non conforming setbacks on the other structure granted. Through, prior, through a prior variance of the proposed addition expands a non-conforming lot coverage and expands non-conforming side yard setbacks. With that, may we hear from the applicant. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Derek Vitaly. I'm the general contractor. Uh, I've been asked to represent and uh, move forward on the project for 28 Child Street, where uh, Mike Olson and Jess Olson reside. Um, and we have submitted um, uh, some plans with uh, what is existing and what is proposed, and along with some viewpoints and angles um, that surround the property as well. Um, we are uh, you wanted to go start um, after your introduction, you want me to start going through some slides? Or? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say. Just move us through as though no one remembers you know, yeah. prior material, just to kind of give us a big picture. So we're asking to uh, our request to review the special permit uh, for non-conformities uh, due to recent revised zoning determination uh, dated on May 3rd of 2023. And that is up in the document. Okay. So we can see the home where it exists on 28 Charles Street. It's a, it's a special property. It has uh, two homes um, within that property zone that you see highlighted. Uh, second house being set back from the road and actually inter you know not intersecting with this other single family home um, with about four feet of clearance between the homes roughly. And um, as you can see, the South End is a, a very close tight knit community for, for all involved there. Um, so we seek some relief 
um, and asking for our permit to give them an expanded deck on the rear of the home, which also would include a section for a screened in porch with screens only. That is the existing uh, home as it stands. And there's a small deck and porch there, which um, they would like to put a roof covering um, that would enable them to exit the existing sliders to a covered area, which would turn into the open area, which um, would be a screened in area and also extend the deck out and if you can see this bush line that's here now, we have um, it's approximately that distance where they have an existing deck and an existing patio. We're just kind of going to make it one one space uh, for them with an outdoor deck and a little streamed in area to go along with it. That's the zoning matrix. I don't know. Uh, that's. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much you want me to expand on that. If we, if we need to touch on that, um, then we can go into. Yeah, yeah, you go back to the. Yeah, Mr. Lively, if you want to just, if, if we can go back to the previous slide, yeah. just walk. I mean, we see the matrix, uh, but right. it's just walk us through what it is and what it will be. All right, you know, for each of those dimensional elements. Yeah, so um, we had the. Uh, I gotta let Mike the homeowner oh, you see that. on the side setback. And so the uh, <laughs> um, at Olson, Frank, and Carroll Street. Uh, so basically, the changes here are the lot numbers. So we're adding um, the, the uh, deck is in the uh, screened in portion about 12 by 15, plus the additional coverage. And then the uh, side setback, you notice on the front or the front setback are the same. Uh, the rear setback is, uh, is is 37 feet proposed. Right now it's 59 feet, so it's quite a bit of ways to the rear setback. The other change is really the side B setback, or the um, this is not the updated one. Uh, side B setback is actually uh, yeah, currently it's 1.42. That's still totally the limit. The change is. Uh, um, the, the building that's going to be put in there is actually further in than what the current setback of one point four is approximately uh, um, two and a half feet from the, uh, the lot line. So it's really just continuing the non conformance on the side B setback. Um, is continuing out uh, toward the rear, and then the lot coverage is increasing. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, and then, okay. yeah, on this one, um, this just shows the dimension you can see on the on the side. The current house is 1.42 uh, feet from the lot line um, on, on the right there, um, and then the uh, proposed deck is roughly about two and a half feet. You can't see the exact number there, um, and you can see the, the um, there's about four feet between uh, the two two and a half story house, which is the other um, family house on on our lot. Uh, about four and a half feet between their house and the deck. And then the dimensions not on there, but between their house and the actual screened in porch is about 10 feet. And one of the things we try to do here is be considerate of our neighbors. Um, since that house, uh, the two and a half story house, the Greens, mm -hmm. is already very close um, to the house, and the corner of the house is you know, about three or four feet wide, uh, whatever distance. So we, we moved the structure itself as far as we could to the on this diagram to the right, closer to the fence, so we could give them as much room as we could um, on their side of the house. That side of their house just has two small windows, and um, it, it extends past the first window, but it doesn't cover the line of sight of the second window. So we tried to um, put it in place, be considerate, so that they um, they had still you know a good view out their window, the two small windows that they do have, and we didn't they didn't have a wall that we were looking at when it came out. Or when they looked out. And then on the other side, uh, 26 Charles Street, there's about uh, 14 feet between their door, the, the end of their house, and the fence, and another foot or so between that structure. So, um, and we also talked to uh, Kathy, who lives in that house. Um, just, you know, we uh, gave him a picture of the 
of the, of the structure and explain everything, answer any questions, and uh, neither the Greens or Kathy or even uh, the people in the front, um, Thomas Kennedy, Richard, um, they all they didn't have neither, none of them had issues about um, you know, the placement, the size, and, and, and everything for the uh, for the structure. Very good. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Lively, did you want to walk us, or Mr. Olson, did you want to wish to walk us through any of the other remaining slides or we'll just pick up from there? Sure. This is um, the, you know, Charles Street runs along the side, and this is a, a totally face turned home, which the front door is, you know, technically not facing the street. It's uh, facing the front yard that's actually shared with the house that's to the left of that photo there. Um, and the viewpoint gets a little skewed because as you can look in that far left corner, you actually see the other house and on the overview plan, you can see how, how close it is and how close the homes are. Um, so that's just the front on view. Um, we would be traveling through that area as we create that pathway and egress to the backyard and the back of the house. Um, where before the demo and currently the homes were linked um, by that existing deck. The deck actually created a, a step over um, to get back there. And now we're actually creating a four foot wide egress so that machines, people, everything can be easily accessible back there. Whereas before they would have to literally like pick up the one more from the rear shed over the deck mm -hmm. and bring it down to the front to even that. So for all conveniences and all emergency situations, I think we're improving the tough situation that they're in already right there. So um, if we go to the next slide, this is the, uh, what would be considered the, from Charles Street, the right side of the home, which is actually the rear side of their home. We can follow that along. And this just shows the property line, how close the home is to the next highway. Um, the retaining wall that's there, it travels all the way back um, to the fenced in area. And then it goes even further back to the end of their property. And this driveway obviously accesses the neighbors two front doors with their own condo uh, situation is similar where one of the front doors is in the driveway uh, a little bit earlier. And then the second home entrance is further down the driveway on the right as well. So, and then if we go to the next slide, um, the one on the top left expands the view to the neighbors, what we were just putting out just describing. And then the second photo actually shows how close the house is to the blue home, which we're uh, proposing to put the, the deck expanded and, and uh, screened in area on. They're very tight, very close. Is there any questions that anybody has while we have? Going. Well, we'll we'll get to the questions part, but um, but thank you. Yeah, okay. we, we we you know we, we sure may. But um, anything further? Just uh, oh, okay. yeah, one thing. Yeah. So if you, uh, I guess you can see on the, the bottom drawing, you can see that the structure itself is to the far left, and then there's a little bit of an overhang over the um, the doors, uh, lighters, the spiders, and then um, so there is, like I said, I think it's about ten feet between the structure and the yellow house. And then between the structure and the neighbor's house is about 15 feet. We try to maximize those distances. And then okay. it comes out, as uh, Derek said earlier, comes out to be just beyond where the bushes are um, on the top picture. It's the extent of the deck. And the structure itself is, a, is actually seven feet in from that. So it's seven feet. So 15 feet out, and then the deck is 20 feet out. So um, it doesn't extend past. You probably can't see in there. There's a couple windows on the yellow house. It, it stands past the first window, but not past the second window. Very good. Okay. Um, anything else you want to add? Um, I don't know. Uh, do we have any other uh, slides? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one more. One more operation. Just a picture. Okay. So okay. there it is as right. our quality sketch up um, technology that's providing us a, a virtual view of what it would look like as opposed to where the home is going to sit, the open space between the home and the uh, just the shed uh, type style roof over the sliders so they can you know bring food out without getting soaking wet to the just screened in porch area on the deck. Yeah. 
um, that again shows that and then that's a um, closer view of what that would look like. Right. Yeah, that's that's very helpful for, for me. Um, okay, and, and that rendering is the screened in right portion. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, anything further? In these? Uh, I I don't know. I I don't know what else to add in right now. It's the four letters again. Yeah, there's other like slides here that you can actually go. Yeah, I mean, make sure and you feel free and, and don't don't feel any reticence. If there are slides that you've up that are loaded. We'll be cool. yeah. free to just yeah, just go right through them. Yeah. Um, we will make sure that we have everything in the record. Mm -hmm. I just want to mention again, we did talk to the neighbors and we have the, the letters in the package um, on both sides, the greens and, and happy, and then um, the common in front. And like I said, we, we did talk with them and none of them had any issues. And they were also very supportive. We're just going to zoom. I'm going to I've asked the seller to zoom that in. Okay, so this one is. So, um, Tom Kennedy is at 26A. Got it. And so if we're facing if we're facing the structure from the uh, from the roadway, that's to the left or to the right. To the right. To the right. Okay. Yeah. So they're they're in the front. So, so, so they're going to be sorry. No, no, please. Oh, I apologize. Yeah. So the um they're in the front 26A. So then the front their house is actually you're facing the street and they have a, a door that's um on the side that's mm -hmm. not. It's still facing our house, their current house. Got it. Structures, there's no, but they can view it if they look from another door and look to the right. And then 28, 26B is um, on a different page. Uh, Kathy signed it as well. And she, her door, her front door is actually, um, she would go that front door. She's looking straight at our backyard. So um, there is a fence, it's 14 feet away, um, which is elevated because there's a retaining wall. Um, okay. Six foot fence and then structures beyond that. That's what this looks like when they come out of there. So this is what she's viewing currently is the fence, and the house is going to go up behind the uh, structure. It will go up behind here. Um, that house. Sure. So we add one more in. <laughs> yeah. It's only a couple of units on the Rita. If if. We we keep we we have to keep that if that's okay if you like yeah. the record yes um but thank you that's that's helpful okay um if there's nothing further uh, thank you for the presentation uh, on the application we'll close that portion of the public hearing and go to uh, public comment and we'll start with uh, anyone in the room just show of hands anyone wish to speak in connection with the application um, either for against or just because. Um, Raise your hand. Seeing no hands, um, we'll go online. We just have one individual online uh, uh, via Zoom. And uh, if there is any wish to speak from our online participants, seeing no show of hands there, uh, I will go ahead and close that portion of the public hearing and we'll go into questions from the board. Mr. Swanton. Yeah, I'll go first. Um, so what we're talking here is about you want to put a about a 12 by 15 screen porch basically where your deck is yeah and your neighbor the one you share the lot with uh 28 the one right to the left of your house you have a lot of support from them yes mm -hmm. and then the one across to the right of your house with a and b you have a lot of support from both of those yeah. folks that can see you yeah. okay i'll just verify i really i don't want any questions thank you Thank you, Mr. Swanton. Any, any other members of the ZBA wish to uh, pose any questions? Yes, Ms. Patrick. I admit I was confused by the fact that at different places in the record, there's 28 and B, 28.5, 28 and a half. So I was trying to figure out who was signing the butter letter. The butter letter says, I understand that the screen structure will be no longer than. 12 by 15. Do we have evidence that the abutters know the dimensions of the deck in its entirety as 22 by 18? And do they know that the deck extends past the first window of the house? I mean, I think that, that was, that's going to be part of the materials that are on file. Is that, is that right? Has anything 
Has that changed since the no, it hasn't changed. It's, um, we did show the pictures that are there, or some version of the pictures we did show. We gave that to our neighbors, okay, and said ahead of time that this is well, what I'm asking though is the butter signed a statement that said, I understand that the screen structure will be no larger than 12 by 15, but the total dimensions of the deck are 22 by 18. So I'd like to make sure the abutters understand that it's 22 by 18 inch, inch deck. 12 by 15 of which will be screened down. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. It's, it, 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 at the time that I talked to them and they signed the letter, um, I did walk and, and show them, especially the, uh, the greens, which is the yellow house right next door. We were in the backyard and I showed them what the footprint was going to be, where it was going to come out to. So, not in the letter, I guess, because uh, we, we didn't mention like, uh, the deck side, as you mentioned. They saw that. But, Right. Well, this is what and so I did walk. So, yeah, I did walk. Well, they, they were provided with the uh, uh, relative scale of that drawing, and, and Ms. Beck expressed it's a fair one for sure. Uh, but, you know, I imagine that if they saw that in the intimacy of the space itself, um, that, you know, that's that would be what the abutters saw. So, the, you know, whether that translates into the, you know, the dimensions. Exactly or not, I think the relativeness of it, it looks like they presented that one. They want it, they want to say essentially. So they understand it extends. Yes, I so I, they'll look out the window and yeah, yeah, I, understand. Yeah, yeah, I explained okay. to them um to yeah. how far the deck came out yeah, relative to the book was there and how close it was to the house. Okay. Okay. And then uh, how big the screen in part was you know, relative to, to the, the total deck. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just I read their a butter mm -hmm. approval carefully and found it the different dimensions, the total versus I, I understand that. Thank you. Excellent. Um any other questions from the board? Uh, would you just monitoring the uh, renderings up? I just ask if you just comment a bit about the materials that are going to be. Employed here. No, no, the rendering of the of the of the structure of the of the of the addition. Here we go. Yep. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's going to be frames um, open um, with open timber that you can almost see through that um, clear where it's going to be filled in with siding. Is we made it transparent, almost like you can see through to the roof. And they're going to be exposed uh, roof members um, inside that covering um, with just a, a center uh, light inside. So it's going to be, um, you know, framing. We, he may decide to just uh, be board uh, some small areas up there to give it some kind of finish. But uh, there are no windows, and it is 100% screen all the time. So it's just a, a framed structure and uh, wrapped with, you know, white, um, probably PVC to protect from the elements. And, uh, you know, exact or timber tech decking with, uh, again, the same exact uh, product to frame around the, the bottom skirt of the deck. That's all I have. Yeah. Please. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Spec. Um, any other questions? Um, I don't have any either. Uh, so uh, unless there's anything further, I'll close that portion of the public hearing and we will go into deliberations. And again, um, we are deliberating the criteria for a special permit for nonconformities. In order to grant a special permit for nonconformities, the board must find that there will be no addition of a new nonconformity uh, and that um, we must also find that the um, proposed alteration is not substantially more detrimental um, to the neighborhood uh, than the existing non-conforming use or structure. And uh, with that, we'll jump into deliberations. And again, uh, Mr. Shannon has recused himself. Ms. Packnick will be deliberating and voting. So uh, why don't we begin with uh, Mr. Swanton, just because this is not here. I'm feeling good energy right here. There you go. Jump right there. Uh, well, there are, there are no new nonconformities. So then we have to look at whether what is proposed is more detrimental to the neighborhood than what's already there. Um, 
And the way I look at it is a deck and it's a screen porch. Um, sometimes we consider massing if there's a lot of massing, but you know, the size of the structure, how much bigger it's getting, but the, it's a screen porch. And the house next to you on the right, 26 A and B's, that's already a pretty big house. Now, yours is an unusual situation because you have two houses on a lot. I've been here for years now, I've not seen one yet. I've two houses on a lot. I too live in the South, and I know it's kind of a dense neighborhood, uh, so I get that. Um, you not only have a fairly big house next to you, diagonally across from you, you have a gigantic old steam mill uh, that's four stories tall. So, I mean, it's, I don't think this is particularly uh, too much massing for the neighborhood. So, with no new nonconformities, and I, you know, I also think that I'm very glad you've got letters of support from your immediate abutters, the guy you shared a lot with, and the person right to your right. That's very important in this situation, how tight it all is. So, with those letters of support and with the fairly minimal project here, uh, I can support this project and vote in the affirmative. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Swanton. Um, further deliberations? I well, won't we'll do the round robin thing. I think we can just. Yeah. We have further deliberations. Just, I'd be glad to weigh in. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, my colleague Mr. Swanton has ticked off uh, the concerns and the issues that, that uh, I focused on. This is obviously a very cozy little neighborhood, and um, the scale of the of the porch uh, certainly comports with the existing structure, and it certainly is not. Uh, by way of scale and mass and of course size, uh, uh, not compatible with the neighborhood. In fact, it fits uh, quite nicely in the neighborhood. Uh, a lot of coverage goes from 28 to 31, give or take. Uh, not significant from my perspective, but certainly not a substantial, more detrimental uh, to the neighborhood. Uh, I too am. Uh, uh, moved by the letters of support, particularly um, the letter from the uh, homeowner that shares the lot. So uh, I too tend to agree. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Anything further? I would agree with Mr. Swan and Mr. Bennett. Very good. Um, I, I too agree. I, I wouldn't have anything further to add with a very uh, thoughtful and, and um, complete presentation and I uh, like my colleagues I'm moved by the most acute acutely impacted um parties being the neighbors speak in favor of it speaks behind us I mean and like anything? yeah buy them dinner that's <laughs> great I, I would have checked maybe yeah. you know? <laughs> after we um, very good. Um, okay. so, so with that, um, I will close deliberations and thank you all for the deliberations. And I will now go to uh, entertaining a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the special permit for nonconformities for 28 on Charles Street, Unit B. Thank you, Mr. Swanton. Motion is made by Mr. Swanton and seconded by. I'll second that. Wow. Thank you. Uh, motion is made on the uh, motion to approve the special permit for nonconformities. Motion uh, by Mr. Swanton, seconded by Mr. Delisle. Calling the roll, Mr. Swanton. Yes. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Mr. Delisle. Yes. Ms. Peckman. Yes. Well, Chair Betty, yes. That is five in the affirmative. The ayes have it. Motion carries. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you for, for your Thanks. time. Uh, okay, moving to the um, next and final application on this. Uh, this is a short evening for us, which is always nice. Um, this is the application of Christina and uh, Tadding. Hi. Hi. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Kirk, uh, the application is for four Everett Drive. Uh, the applicant seeks a variance to construct a two story addition to the rear of the structure that creates a new non conforming rear setback. May we hear from the applicant? Good evening, everyone. My name is Cy Kirk. I'm joined by, by Christina. Um, we're the owners of four Everett Drive. Um, our architect, Rob Barge, Joel Gagman, is on the hall from Architecture all quick. Um, probably to the, to the sort of the way. Um, yeah, so uh, a Royal Barriers Bulls Dog Cape uh, house located at the corner of Everett Drive and Bennett Drive. Um, 
Previous owners, we've owned the property since June of last year. Previous owners have added shed dormer to the um, to the existing cave element. They've added a breezeway to the left and a, and a garage at some point in the 90s, I believe. Our proposal is to add an additional ground floor bedroom um, with um, farmer's porch to the side and a creation of that ground floor bedroom and a master bedroom on above, which would adjoin the, the existing shed dorm room. Um, as part of the, the process, we're, we're a young family. We have a, a child at home, a two-year-old, and we're looking to um, send our family at, at, at a later point. Um, we are looking to make the, the house slightly more comfortable for ourselves, uh, create an additional bedroom on the, on the second floor. Uh, we also both work from home um, and we want to create uh, further space within the property for ourselves to, to, to do that. Um, the lot itself um, is 10,700 um, square feet on, a, on an R1 zoning. We're existing non conformance over the garage and to the front and to the side. Um, as part of the the design process with our architect, we looked at a number of different options, one of which was going over the breezeway and the garage to create that additional bedroom, but we were already in a non-conforming um, area, so we'd be looking for a variance as is. Um, and our proposal was to go out the back here with the um, 15 by 12 um, proposed size with the four foot six. Um, Farms Porsche. And if you wouldn't mind going on to the next page for her. Um, so yeah, we're we we do not we're not changing the overall height of the structure in any way. Um, this is how it looks from the Everett Drive um, side of the house. There's no proposed change to that. We can go to the next one. Uh, as it stands, this is the current view from the back of the property. Uh, we will be coming out on the left hand side by that. Um, if you wouldn't mind zooming in, please. Yeah, uh, where the belt, where the bulkhead is, we'd be coming out twelve feet from there, coming out through where that ground floor bedroom or ground floor bedroom window is on the left hand side, and we'll be joining on the shed dormer of that top window. Um, and here's a, a proposed view of the the property from the rear. Um, with the, with the farmer's porch off to the side of it. Um, yeah, you can go to the next, please. Uh, yeah, from the looking towards Senate Drive, um, obviously there'd be no change with the garage on the top and at the back side of the property looking towards um, Senate Drive, you'll see the uh, two bedrooms stacked on top of each other out that way with the bulkhead facing towards you. Um, yeah, we might go to the next. And then this is the view from Denny Drive looking back towards the property. Um, you can see the existing photograph um, from both angles. We'll be extending out, as I said, out the 12 feet um, with a slight dormer roof facing this way with a window um, and that farmer's porch with a side entrance door. Just to just to add the farmer's porch on the side was just to make it blend in with the neighborhood and make it look like a little homey feel. Um, as my husband mentions, we only have two bedrooms upstairs right now, so the idea of putting a third so we can extend our family. Um, we are so excited to be living in Newburgh Ford and have got to know a lot of our neighbors um, and really hope we can stay in this home and for our family here. So um, that is kind of what our extension is hoping to do. Um, a lot of our, the letters that we said were a great idea. And as our first time homeowner, I wish I knew to do that. <laughs> um, but we talked to a lot of our neighbors, some of which were willing to come tonight, but they're in their 90s and we didn't want to put them out. But um, we have a lot of support from some of our surrounding neighbors, but at the same time, we didn't want to impose anyone. So when we saw them on the neighborhood, they've been over to our house for barbecues and parties, St. Patrick's Day parties and things like that. We talked to them about this extension. Um, so yeah, we're just excited to be here and excited for the opportunity. Um, um, Thank you. The purpose of that that um, <laughs> farmer's porch 
to, to bring out the four and a half feet on the width was to create um, headspace on that upper space so it's usable. Um, we obviously want to have a, a, a usable space on, on that top floor. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, yeah, um, is it possible to, to look at some of the, the plan drawings? Also? Yeah, of course. Please, please feel yeah. free to just yeah move us through everything that you have. Um, yes, yeah, so these are the, the 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 elevation drawings which you you've just seen. If you wouldn't mind just going into the, the plan view, so this is um, the, the existing uh, plan for the first floor. Um, as I said, we're coming out that back space, the uh, 15 by 12 with the, the farmer's porch off to the side with a, a full basement um, underneath it. The, the existing cave property, the original element of it already has a, a, has a full basement on it. Um, yeah, could you jump up to the next? Yeah, and then this is how it, how it will look tied into the um, into the property on the, the on the upper floor, um, as you can see the that the overhang of that um, dormer on the Denadry side of the property would not be possible without that farmer's porch, um, and that would not give us that um, that usable headspace in that in that part of the property. And I think that's it for me. Is is Joel? Want to add anything to it that we don't call? Um, let me, uh, we'll let's, yeah. She's our architect. Yeah, so I, um, thank you, Mr. Curtin and, and Mr. Curtin. Um, let's see. Uh, yep, I do see Joel. Uh, Joel, if you can uh, hear us, go ahead and unmute your mic, uh, and we would uh, be happy to hear from you as well. Sure, can you hear me? I'm sorry, could, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the the other the other thing that I wanted to just bring up in terms of the design and the placement of this particular addition is, given the shape of the lot being a corner lot, um, the placement of the existing house on the angle sort of renders most of the lot um, would need a dimensional variance no matter where the addition would go um, to some degree. This just sort of had the least impact going off the back of the house. So coming off the side would have been ideal, but that really would have encroached on the, the front setback on Dennett. So this, this here seemed to be the best position for it. And to slide it over um, more towards the garage side would have uh, interfered with the existing bathroom windows on the first and second floor uh, thus removing natural light and ventilation from those rooms. So, um, and then the, the porch, the other architectural reason for the porch is A, for whoever the guest is, they've got a place to sit um, when they're visiting. And um, also it softens that edge of the house so that the roof line is brought down to the first floor. So it's more cape-like even on the side. Very good. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add, Joel? Um, no, just that in terms of, you know, seeking a dimensional variance, you know, the, the, the hardship does fall into the shape of the lot created by the positioning of the existing architecture. It really, um, you know, and in comparison to some of the other neighbors, uh, you know, throughout the neighborhood, um, if you sort of, if you've had a chance to drive through there or just look at some of the, the aerial shots, uh, many of the houses in there were built pretty close to some of the property lines because the zoning was different back then. So we're free and clear farther than than the two abutting neighbors to um, all of the property lines. Um, and it's in greater conformity than the the front of the house over by where the garage was placed. So that's that's all I needed to say on the the reason for the the request for the variance. Very good. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Curtin, anything further you wanted to add before we moved on? Okay, um, thank you very much. So with that, we'll close the presentation portion of the public hearing and go to public comment. Uh, anyone in the room? Sir, and uh, if you could just give us your name and address. Okay. My name is Paul Clackman, my wife Sarah. Uh, we're at One Chatty Wayne. We are the abutters to the rear. And uh, we're kind of opposed to this variance request. Uh, we feel that it's going to be further encroaching on our privacy and could potentially impact property value down the line. 
Um, we we're already, you know, our house was built close to the property line, and this addition is now going to would put the addition probably within about 30 feet of our bedroom window. Uh, and even, even then the farmer's porch is going to be looking pretty much into our family. Room. And that's, you know, really will have kind of been paid on our privacy. Uh, unfortunately, we were not one of the neighbors that were queried about this addition. So, you know, we never had a chance to voice our, our thoughts or our concerns uh, relative to both. Uh, I don't know that the shape, the placement of the house on that lot really constitutes a, you know, you know, a hardship. It's very common within the neighborhood for houses to be shaped, you know, placed on the lots at corner at an angle, kind of based on most of the other houses that are on the corners, such as ours and, and other capes in the neighborhood that are on a corner lots. Um, you know, you know, kind of looking at the getting an education here, uh, looking at the what what constitutes a hardship. I just, uh, to me anyway, I couldn't see that uh, this represents a hardship reply. Um, there's nothing unusual about the land or the topography, or uh, there's uh, doesn't seem to be an extreme financial hardship to. Uh, in place here to maybe construct uh, on another part of the, over, or maybe over that garage or over that breezeway, but there's already a non-conforming setback rather than creating another non-conforming setback by placing the addition here. Okay, very good. Thank, thank you, sir. Um, anything further? Okay, thank you. Um, very good. Uh, seeing no other members in the room uh, to raise further hands, I uh, I will close that portion of the public hearing. Actually, I'm sorry, there's, well, we just have one attendee and that is the applicant's architect. Um, so I'm gonna close that portion of the public hearing and we will go to questions from the board and why don't we begin with anyone who has a question, wants to start, if not, Mr. Swanton's gonna, I'm going to jump off for that. Go ahead, Phillips. I just had one. Um, both the architect and the applicant mentioned they looked at moving the um, the addition further down. And I understand if it was directly behind the house, it would uh, take away the bathroom windows. What about if it was behind the breezeway? I mean, is that that's actually not a new nonconformity, right? It's still the, the house, the, the addition, if it was the same size, would be 40 feet from the backyard. If you split it all the way down to the garage. Is there any reason it couldn't go behind the breezeway? Uh, the, the sewer line of the, the property runs directly out to the left and runs between our neighbors to the left hand side and the garage. The sewer line? The sewer line, yes. So the sewer line comes out the back of your house. Yeah, right now? correct. Yeah, so it comes it comes directly out. It takes a left, and then it runs um, between our garage and our abutters to the left hand side of us. Um, furthermore, we also looked at that we as an option. Um, the layout of the, pro the property as it stands would we be essentially putting a bedroom up or a kitchen bedroom off the, the the kitchen space, right. which um, to us felt like it would certainly disrupt the flow of the property. Right, and the breezeway is only a story tall, right? Uh, one correct. Story. correct, and, and, so the, and the garage. The garage, um, I'm point out also, the foundation of the garage is just um, it's up on a breeze block, so we have to demolish it to so rebuild build up the top of it. Yeah. All right, all good answers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, can Joel? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Ah, I uh, we 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 heard you uh, uh, just jump in, so we wanted to give you the opportunity to uh, to address any of the uh, or further address the answers to the questions that uh, Mr. Channon had raised. 
Well, one was um, one was regarding the breezeway. It is a single story, so trying to put a two story and then connecting it to the house would have created almost a monstrosity and wouldn't have done much justice to Royal Barry Wills, who is probably the designer of that that home. I want to address the privacy issue because currently the um, the addition is only going out um, twelve feet, and there are currently windows on the second floor. Uh, position there and then down from the if you're sitting on where the porch is proposed I, I don't see how that's any different from any other house in that neighborhood if two people are in the backyard at the same time I mean you're you know unless you have a six foot fence and your chair is low you know you're you're, you're going to see your neighbor so that's that's part of being a neighbor um, so but again I just want to reiterate that that it when you talk about lot shape it's not so much the fact that the lot itself has to be jigged and jagged and curved and all kinds of other things going on. Aside from topography, lot shape can also be considered the systems and structures that are pre-existing on the property, which then make it near impossible for a homeowner to do anything without seeking relief. Um, that is the whole point. I mean, coming in for a dimensional variance, um, I know I've, you know, in Newburyport, I've had them done for geography and, and for lot shape. Um, it's it's valid. We're not asking for a tremendous amount. We're not. We'll still be 25 feet from the property line. Um, and again, if you look at uh, you know if you if you look at the, the the neighboring the abutters house, yes, it is it is five feet from the property line. So um, you know that's and that's a pre existing the the 12 feet getting closer, uh, implying that you know two bedrooms overlooking his yard is going to create some sort of a privacy issue, I would say that the applicant would have the same privacy issue that, well, gee, we're getting closer and maybe there'll be someone looking in our windows. So I, I, I don't really, I, I'm not really buying that one, especially having been to the house numerous times and walking the lot and, you know, trying to be conscious of that as well. Um, so that's all I wanted to say in, in reply to the, um, to the, to the negative comments regarding the project. Um, if, if I might, Joanne, I just want to make one response, and I, I, I can't help but indulge myself in this, so I'll ask you to kindly indulge me in it. Um, the comment you had made, and I think the analogy uh, you drew, I, I, I just want to point out, it, it, it may not necessarily resonate in the same way uh, or in the spirit in which I think you intended it, because that, hey, you're closer to me, so I'm closer to you. One of those two scenarios is is self-induced, while the other isn't, and I think that's a um, I think that's a, a palpable distinction. You know, I don't think that there's the same. I don't think that there's parity in that, but I I just want to I want to point that out, um, and and also just for what it's worth, not necessarily negative comments, just sort of comments um, in opposition, I suspect, but critical comments for sure. But we don't necessarily assign negative or positive views at least you know we just hear it all but um but i wanted to make sure that i just mentioned that because um you know that's that's my question i guess that's a form of a question yes but isn't it true that fill in the blanks with everything i just said so um i wanted to give you an opportunity if you wanted to add anything further before we went on to um you know uh to further go through the uh, the application no, and it wasn't my intention to say, well, if you're five feet off, we can be five feet off. I mean, I was just sort of using that as, as an example in terms of overall proximity and privacy issues and everything else, that's all. Understood, and, and certainly um, respected. So I, uh, I, I say all that with courtesy, of course. So um, if there is anything further, uh, we have questions from Ms. Peckman. Yes, well, my first question was going to be what could the... The property owners have one at I would, in France, we say Chatney. 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 My second question was going to be about the people at Six Everett. My third question is what is the square footage of the proposed addition? Uh, it would be like 200 and 40 overall. 204? Talking two for the other one. And is that just you, that's the that's footprint, the footprint right? That's it's the footprint. not the square footage. Double that, it's two stories, right? 
Yeah, the, 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 the second floor has dormers, so that cuts out some of the square footage that you would find down below. And some of it's the existing. And it's about 280 floor. between the two floors. Okay. Um, any further questions? Uh, any other questions from members of the board? Okay. I guess I'll ask a question. Yeah. The, um, my colleague over here, Mr. Shagnon, asked about, you know, if you were to slide this addition all the way down to the breezeway, uh, wouldn't that fix it? Um, I guess, you know, I noticed it's 27 feet off the lot line, the porch is 24. If this thing was 30 feet off the lot line, there would not be a variance. Um, you wouldn't have to slide that addition very far to go from 27.1 to 30. I, I don't think you have to, you certainly don't have to go all the way down to the breezeway. I guess you made the point that it should be, it's a two story addition, it needs to be on a two story house. So you don't want to go to the breezeway, but you could go just a little bit down. I just would like to hear again why the addition needs to generate this variance. Why can't it just be slid a little further down? Uh, You'd like me to address that? Whoever. Um, yes, please. Um, sure. Uh, well, as I said earlier, um, if it slid down, we'd lose the two bathroom windows um, in both bathrooms. And But even more critically, from a design point on the interior, the way to then enter the second floor uh, would be through uh, about half of the existing bathroom. And I mean, the house is so the house is so small now, it's actually it's a very small cape. I mean, in upstairs, it gets even smaller with, uh, you know, the the. The, the roof lines. So that that just wouldn't work at all um, without blowing the whole second floor apart. Okay, thank you. I don't have any other questions. Great. Um, any other questions before we move on? Um, very good. Seeing none, uh, we'll close that portion of the public hearing and go into deliberations. Again, um, as a board, we are deliberating the legal criteria under section 10H uh, for variance. The uh, variance criteria requires that the conditions and circumstances are unique to the applicant's lot, structure, or building, and that they do not apply to the neighborhood land structures or buildings in the same district. Two, that strict application of the provisions of this chapter would deprive the applicant of reasonable use of the lot, structure, or building in a manner equivalent to the use permitted to be made by other owners of their neighborhood land, uh, their neighboring lands, structures, or buildings in the same zoning district. Number three of the four uh, criteria, the unique conditions and circumstances are not the result of actions of the applicant taken subsequent to the adoption of our zoning code and new report. And finally, four, relief will not constitute a grant of a special privilege inconsistent with limitations upon their uh, properties, upon other properties in the district. So. Uh, with that, we'll um, we'll jump into our deliberations. Mr. Chairman, could yes. I pose uh, one additional question before yeah. we go to deliberations? Of course, yeah. Um, is there any possibility that there could be some sort of vegetative screening between the properties to uh, to, to accomplish, you know, uh, the privacy to, to get you know both sides toward the point where the the privacy issue is not an issue? Yeah, so uh, as it currently stands, there's actually a, a ten foot fence from the shed back towards. Um, uh, if you you keep zoom in, actually, it actually said where the stone wall is. <clears throat> so as you can see in the drawing, there's kind of halfway around the back um, portion. There's a, a fence, and then there's a low stone wall between um, between us and and then Detroit. Between the shed and then the uh, As it stands, we have um, tall ornamental or vegetative grass between mm -hmm. two properties. Um, actually, cut it down in the last couple of days because I want to go back better growth summer. But uh, that, yeah, that can be looked at. It, it, there currently is tall grass vegetation there, and if necessary, there can be a different matter. Yeah, like trees or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. There actually is a tree on the corner of the property. Mm -hmm. the yeah. Thanks. 
Thank you very much. Right. Yep, absolutely. Um, so um, circling back then to our deliberations, um, having gone through the legal criteria, we um, I, I should also note that um, that in order for the um, zoning board to grant this variance, we must also find a substantial hardship, uh, which is neither financial uh, or uh, that is that literal enforcement of the provisions of this ordinance would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner or app or applicant, and that desirable relief may be granted without a substantial detriment to the public good and without nullifying substantially or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the ordinance. And apologies for that long-winded sort of detail, but that is the legal criteria. Um, now we've said it. Um, so members of CBA, what, uh, what do you wish to say? Let us deliberate. Who wants to go first? Or not? Yes. I, the conditions and circumstances are not unique to this law. Six Everett 19 Dennis Dennett and one checking at Patton. So he's done. Are in similarly shaped corner lots with the houses set at an angle. It happens to be that this house has a bigger rear yard and, and uh, some other houses have a bigger front yard. But if the shape of the lot creates a hardship here, it would have to create a hardship on many other lots in this neighborhood. Okay. Um... And I, I, I also, I'm looking at the, the, there's an assertion that the phrase unable to make reasonable use of the property is coextensive with not being able to build out an entire lot. The addition in the rear is very large. The ridge lines meeting, it's a highly visible corner. And any vegetative screening would require full grown trees. And I think it, the light and air for the neighbors as well as the privacy. Mm -hmm. And the rear setback. Those are the things that I need to think about. Okay. Um... I guess I would comment. And my comments are somewhat flip side of those. I do find a lot uh, and the unique shape of this lot, the thriving force as it relates to the configuration of, of the home on this lot. And I think that uh, sat, that satisfies me with respect to that criteria. And there are whole host of other criteria to give it. We have to tick off, but um, I think the lot shape itself, the unique shape, uh, does um, is is unique, and therefore satisfies that criteria. Um, so then we kind of drill down on these various other factors. Um, a strict application would deprive the applicant of reasonable use of what of the lot. Well. Uh, if I hear the evidence correctly, uh, there has been a thoughtful and comprehensive evaluation of alternatives with respect to where the building, uh, the addition would be added. Uh, so uh, I believe that the evidence supports the finding that uh, a denial would, would indeed constitute um, uh, uh, an intrusion on the reasonable use of the property. Um, uh, the next criteria is the unique conditions are not the result of actions of the applicant. Well, I don't believe the applicant built the house uh, in its current configuration, so that one is met. Uh, then the relief will not constitute a grant of a special privilege inconsistent with the limitations upon other properties in the district. Well, um, I'm not sure what actually that means. Uh, if, 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 if I read that correctly, there would never be a possibility of issuing a variance here in this, after this ordinance. So um, I will just say that I don't think it's, special, it's a special privilege if you meet all the other criteria. And I think that's a good map. Uh, and then 
there's kind of this catch-all which uh, refers to whether or not the relief uh, will be or constitute a substantial detriment to the public good. And when I think about that, I take seriously the, uh, the observations and comments of the neighbor regarding uh, considerations of privacy and the like. Um, I know that uh, a two-story addition is set back 27 feet. Uh, the porch adds a couple feet, uh, two and a half feet more. Uh, the porch, uh, obviously, it's not the kind of structure that is used on a regular basis, certainly not in the winter months. And we all know that we sit out on our porches occasionally, but it certainly doesn't constitute the kind of intense usage that would prompt me to believe that it would be somehow uh, intrusive upon a neighbor. Um, as to the existence of the porch itself, one could suggest, well, why don't, why don't we uh, seek removal of it? Uh, you would gain two and a half feet setback, and now we're close to 30 feet. Uh, in my view, uh, the architectural benefits of the porch uh, improve the house itself and improve the neighborhood as a whole. So uh, all that being said, uh, I believe the criteria for agreeing is something met here. All right, very good, Ms. Benick. Um, any further deliberations? No one else want to comment, add? Um, while you're thinking, I'll, I'll just share my thoughts um, as a dovetail on Mr. Benick's thoughts uh, and comments. As I look at the lot too, it's unmistakably it's unmistakable to, to realize how this sort of kitty-cornered um, structure is placed on the lot. Uh, and it, what it, in my mind, kind of does uh, is it creates a detriment to what would otherwise be a, the geometry of setbacks on an otherwise geometric um, linear lot with respect to the rear of that lot, that um, those two right angles, uh, they, would meet the setback criteria based on one corner's measurement of the home and not meet it based on the other corner's measurement of the home, uh, the rear measurement of the home to the lot line, principally because of the, the kitty cornered configuration of the house. If it were rotated to be more um, you know, isolinear with at least the two rear right angles, it seems to me that this house would be better, uh, would better occupy that space. Uh, but that isn't something in my mind that um, that the applicants have contributed to or themselves caused or exacerbated. So it's I, I too find like Mr. Benick that this isn't this isn't a, um, a circumstance owing to their own um, actions. And I you know I find the shape of the lot to be peculiar and rare. Um, I think that that does add some sense of hardship. Um, and places them at a disadvantage in my mind. Though I say this with great respect to the abutters um, who have spoken, I wonder, and I just say this out loud for us, is there, and perhaps we'll, we'll point this question to the applicants, but is there, to the extent to which this board is inclined to find favor with the application, and I don't know that it will, um, if that were the direction, I would certainly want to condition for myself to create some kind of a green screen at a minimum um, as a mitigation effort uh, to try to soften the impact of the closest of other the neighbors from whom we, we heard. But that is, um, you know, that, that's just my thinking. And I'm curious uh, if anyone else is, is in the same spot. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm in a similar spot. I mean, I, we, we don't, I haven't voted for a lot of variances in my time here. Um, you have to have something unusual with your lot. This is a corner lot, and most of the variances I've supported have been corner lots. Is it your fault you have two frontages up there? If one of those was a sideline rather than a frontage, it wouldn't be a variance because uh, you could be 20 feet away and you're more than that. Um, so I, I agree with the chairman over here that you have an unusual lot for which I, I have some sympathy for a variance. Um, I do like the fact that you're not trying to go like five feet off the lot. It's, you know, 24 for the porch and 27 for the building. 
I also like the thought of visual screening. You know, when we, um, I see you nodding your head, that's good. But when we sometimes approve uh, something, we'll do it with a condition that, you know, the approval comes with a condition that you have to add screening. I realize there is some screening, so, but they're rather short little bushes. Uh, and you have a shed, too, which provides some screening. But uh, additional screening, I think I would find favorable. Anyway, that's my comment. So I could support that with screening and, and realizing this is an unusual lot and almost every variance i've ever voted for has been a corner lot and we run into these problems but you know and i'll just i'll just dovetail it a corner lot by itself it while it used to be something we referred to in the convenient parlance as a as a new report hardship um you know we have been duly admonished by our legal counsel that no such thing exists in the world um but we um we had in the past relied upon that exclusively in our deliberations on variance, you know, a quarter lot in the report at equal uh, basis for hardship. We um, we have to dig a little deeper now if we're if we're really being, you know, so the corner and the placement of the yeah. existing house. Mm -hmm. but, but I don't believe you said that it was exclusively that, but it, but yeah. I do agree with you that it, it's a contributing factor. I also um, want to add, by the way, I mean, this house has 1,584 square feet according to assessor's records of living space. This is not a giant house. Yeah. Um, so, and the addition is 12 by 15. I mean, this is not a, a huge project, not a huge. Okay. I'll, I'll do yeah. that, Mr. Chen. I'll just weigh in. Um, I think it's too bad that uh, the addition couldn't be smaller, uh, so it would not be a variance. I, I do think a, ver a variance is a higher hurdle for us to uh, jump over. Um, it's much easier for a special permit. Uh, you know, if that 27.1, was 30 and there was no porch this would be a, a, i think a cakewalk would be something we see all the time um, however i can't imagine shrinking that addition three feet you'd have a nine foot room um, which is almost unusable by today's standards and i do think the applicant and the um, architect has have convinced me that it would be difficult to slide it um, i think you could slide it a foot and you wouldn't bump into the bathroom windows, but you also wouldn't solve the problem too. Um, I do agree that the we have on occasion found um, houses that are kitty corner on the lot with uh, two front yards that we we do allow the variances uh, because of the special conditions. It's it's not to say that it's unique where there are only three of them in town. You know, there are three or four of them in the neighborhood. Um, we see them a lot in South End as well, a lot of kitty corner or two side yards. And we have granted them variances. So I, I feel comfortable that a variance uh, you know, could be given here. Uh, again, I just wish it was not a variance. It would have been easier had it been in the inspector permit. But I understand now that uh, from the explanation given by the applicant, that it would be difficult for it to shrink enough to, to fall off the variance back to a special partner. So uh, I think it meets the four criteria and I could support the application. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Anything further? Yeah, I think I just wanted to um, sort of pick up on Mr. Bennick's uh, consideration of the fourth prong. Um, I do think that the fourth prong, um, what, what what I believe that to mean is sort of what the, what the architect was getting at where he noted that, you know, the, the other, some of the other homes in the neighborhood are closer to the uh, to the lot lines than what would be allowed now, um, and I think that you know that is something where you have the it's not a privilege inconsistent with um, you know what what you see in the properties in the district. So I do think that you know there is ample evidence that has been presented relative to that fourth that fourth problem. Thank you for. <laughs> Very good. All right. Um, anything further? Yes. Uh, I mean, we have some discretion to say the least, and we don't want to exclude, you know, thoughts, comments, so please. I guess I, I guess I'm under the impression that a variance is granted with minimal impact to the neighbors. And I feel like this impacts us greatly, especially the porch on the side of the house. So we sit in that family room and we have a bay window. Mm -hmm. And it's going to look directly out onto that porch. So the door and steps that go directly towards our family room 
And I think that's a big detriment to my property and other value when we go to sell. I, I certainly. And a, I'm sorry, but it's will make us because because our house is so close to the lot. You're looking directly at either a bank of trees or a fence, so our view is impacted as well. Have to wall us in. Right, I, I understand. Um, and just to um, to ensure for our own sense of you know balance and fairness, we would want you to know um, the criteria. You know, we we take very seriously the comments of the media partners, and you know we appreciate the the passion and you know obviously the you know the um, the thoughts and, and sentiment that go into coming in to speak and share your thoughts with us. It's very very important to each of us. I, I certainly know it's important to me. So we we factor that in for sure. Um, with respect to the criteria, unfortunately, it, it is quite a bit more granular, for better or for worse, than merely an impact on any one neighbor. That's part of it. That's that's a small part of it. There's legal criteria by which we sort of go through to see um, whether it you know meets with measure or not. But I can tell you that for myself and each of us, we we do take very um, great empathy in trying to put ourselves in your shoes as best we can without obviously being you and trying to see if, to the extent to which if the board's inclined to grant an application, is there some mitigation that's favorable or at least better? Um, whether that passes or not is um, yet to be seen, but I'm hearing from you that, that, that you know, uh, a fence or a green screen is, is not an improvement. So I'll say this, any property owner could do that anyway. Um, Correct. And and so there's there's a there's a parity in the proximity to a lot line on both sides of the lot line. Um, but again, I, I say this only just as a human being in the world, not as a member of any board. Uh, but we happen to be that that is it's important to us. So I um, I think we're gonna you know we'll go through the rest of our you know our um, process. But I want to make sure you had an opportunity to to add oh, those comments. For what it's worth, of course. I mean, you know, we, this isn't, you know, it's a room of people. That is that from all Of course. So the uniqueness of the property, there are other houses in the neighborhood that have a similar lot. Mm -hmm. So I don't find it as a unique property that that's the only one. It's not, um, it being the only one is one of the criteria. Um, it, and it's a very common sort of, you know, complication in sort of understanding this, this already complicated landscape of variance. Um, one of the criteria is whether granting this would create, create some special privilege um, to this applicant by virtue of that lot. And so other lots being similar in that curiosity, right, um, is not unusual. And what it means is that any one of them would have to come through the same process that these applicants must come through. So there's no special grant of privilege here in that anyone with that similar radius side corner lot would two have to come here and because any one application is granted doesn't mean that any one other application is somehow um, given some precedent you know we take each one on a case by case you know um, brand new evaluation so one application being granted with even the identical criteria doesn't mean the next one in line gets the same result um, I don't know if that's helpful or even if it answers the question but I, I want to share that for what it's worth can I just say one more thing? Yes. I, I, I don't have to. No, no, no. You, we, listen, we're, this, this is, we're trying to do, uh, we're trying to do a good job as best we can with the tools we have, of course, and, you know, factor in the human factor, which is the each of us piece. So, Thank you. Please. Um, we, we want to be good neighbors. We would be happy if you would like us to put up more vegetation or not. Either way, we'd be happy to talk to you about that and do whatever you would like. Um, and, Joel, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I imagine the porch looking out towards the road. Um, and in addition, we, we really put it on to make the neighborhood look nice. Um, I don't imagine we'd actually sit out there a lot, like the gentleman said, you know, who uses their porch a lot, but we wanted to make it fit in with the neighborhood. Um, so that was our main intent with the porch, is to bring, to, to bring that up again. Thank you, Mrs. Curtin. Uh, and, and I certainly say, and I'm sure my colleagues would join me in this, we, we always encourage open dialogue between neighbors, especially about ours. We live in uh, in close quarters in a place like Newburyport, and you don't have to be in the South End exclusively to be in close quarters with our neighbors. And so this is um, this is just good, you know, 
good human strategy to be in the world, you know. So I encourage you to do that, and uh, we will see what you know how this shakes out. But um, I want to give just a little latitude to hear from you both, and and you know just dovetail on further thoughts. Um, so with that, um, further deliberations. Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to echo. Uh, the chairman's comments that I also take very seriously the comments of the butters and um, I have to weigh the, the comments with respect to the the legal standard here and it is you know it can be difficult but but I do take your comments very seriously thank you um further deliberations if any all right seeing none um I will close that portion of the public hearing and um, we'll entertain a motion uh, and or any second and or any conditions. I will move uh, that the request for variance application 23-2 for four Everett Drive uh, be granted subject to the condition that uh, the applicant and the neighbor agree on a mutually agreeable vegetative screening. Could I through the chair? Yes, please. Uh, sorry, just uh, this is just one of the lenses that I typically look at things through. But um, just to, again, as planning director, I, I would recommend a language or a condition of some type that's more measurable um, and thinking of the mind of the zoning administrator who has to deal with the compliance of, of decisions. Um, and I also would suggest not um, having deference to another party, uh, whoever that may be, even other city officials per se, um, in the approval of the board grants. That could be problematic as a condition. Um, just as a framework in general. You mean another party? By uh, giving... giving approval, but then deferring uh, some sort of substantive element of the board's approval to another party. And yeah. this case, it will operate in addition, I would say, just deferring that to a butters to work out yeah. um, rather than the board deciding or conditioning in some way what that would be itself. Um, and there are some instances that make sense to defer some aspect to a city official of some type. There are some conditions that are appropriate in that nature, but, um, but I think it's highly unusual to uh, place the approval on a condition that then is subsequently has to be determined by the proprietor and the abutter. Well, I think it's, I, I think the measurable piece, and, and, and I appreciate that, and the, the uh, measurable piece would be the installation of a mutually agreeable green screen. You know, uh, is that I, I, problematic I, in the same ways? Yeah, I would suggest in some manner, unless you can quantify in some sort of language, if you will, I would suggest having a plan or some specificity as to what, what type of plantings, you know, where something of that nature, rather than to be determined by. Okay. Um, um, how, how about the, the applicant to submit a planting plan to the planning department? Um, again, if you could provide any particular parameters that we could know, uh, that would be helpful. <laughs> You don't, you don't want to pick the trees either. I no, it's it's not it's not that so much that I have an issue with us reviewing some aspect of it. It's more just that um a sufficient specificity at the time of the board's approval. Okay. Uh, Perhaps we can since since I heard parties might want to work this out. Why don't we get the parties two weeks and if, if nothing can be worked out, the applicant shall come back to the zoning board and we'll take whatever action Um I mean, of course, you know, we, we try to get business done as we can, but we also defer to the best result. Um, I, I think that these are, these are sound sort of concerns. Um, and since you've, it's clear, we heard that there hadn't been a dialogue prior to now, um, you know, we don't want to, you know, we, we don't want to create a dialogue and force it down everyone's you know, you know, down everyone's throat, so to speak. But I will, if you're inclined, I'm happy to entertain a request that we give you two weeks and have you come back at the next hearing. And we don't go through all of this all over again. We have, we've opened and closed all of those previous portions. Um, we would just continue this and pick up from where we left off um, and give you the opportunity to have a discussion and see if there is some thoughtful versus some rush solution that um you know is better or helpful and, and the answer may be we tried and there's it's not any better or any more helpful but at least we'll feel as though we've given this full you know tenure um do you want to hear yeah, yeah. I mean, just that, one, that's yeah. totally fine with us we're also happy to just um 
put any vegetation that they would like us to put out if that if they could tell us that they would want us well, to plant it. I, I appreciate <laughs> that. But the problem is that we we we're we're still that we're back in the same, you know, in the oh, same okay. sort of dark corner where we don't have anything specified. We we just as soon allow you to have that thoughtful and sort of you know deliberate conversation, then come back to us with a plan. And it doesn't have to be a grandiose plan, just a we will put four trees of this species or similar, you know, along this perimeter and or whatever. And then we know. Um and then at least it can be, you know, it can it can be policed and governed and enforced if ever needed. Uh, does that make sense? Okay. Um all right, so uh, we have a request from the applicant to continue. Um, we um, do we have a motion? Go ahead, because you did the motion. I'm sorry. This would be to the board's next meeting. Yeah, this would be to five twenty three. We're not voting on the on the variance request itself. Yes, the we're we're gonna we're, the applicant. Yeah, we're giving the entire day of this. We are um, we're going to vote on the applicant's request to um, continue this, you know, um, to the next meeting for the benefit of the applicants and the neighbors to discuss more thoughtfully how to, if at all, install some kind of a mitigated green screen. So I'll move so. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> Poor Gretchen. <laughs> Gretchen's going to Gretchen's gonna tear things on the ground outside. I'll second. Um, all right, motion's been made uh, by Mr. Bennick and seconded by Mr. Swanton. Um, following the roll, Mr. Swanton. Yes. Mr. Janet. Yes. Mr. Bennick. Yes. Mr. Delisle. Yes. Mr. Beckett. Yeah. Well, Chair Penny, I will. Yes, that is six in the affirmative on the motion to continue. Thank you. Uh, and apologies, we couldn't get everything finished tonight, but, uh, you know, speed, uh, you know, quality over speed is always our preference. And, and there may be some benefit to this opportunity to chat together. Okay, when is this being continued to? 523, the next meeting of our of our board. So we, we meet every two weeks, so it'll be two Tuesdays from Tuesday. We will very likely be here, but just incidentally, yeah. we don't normally meet up here, so we'll probably be downstairs, I think, at our next meeting where we usually meet. So thank you folks for your time and your patience and your comments. And uh, to Mr. and Mrs. Curtin, thank you. We'll see you all in two weeks. Very good. Um, that concludes our uh, public hearings this evening. We're going to close that portion of the agenda and go into the business meeting where we'll have a motion to approve the minutes of 425 2023. Do we have a motion? We'll move on. Motion's double made and, huh. and seconded. Um, all those in favor, aye. 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 Any, any no vote, any nays, no votes, abstentions. The ayes have it. Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Um, and any updates from planning? Nothing I think I would offer at this time, um, other than perhaps. <laughs> Um, some, some of you may already know this. There is a discussion at the Affordable Housing Trust actually tomorrow night about a potential Corey B um, that has been signaled to us by a developer and an attorney, um, Doug Duchesne, who will be presenting that conceptually to the Affordable Housing Trust. I think they're trying to get feedback from the Housing Trust given their role in affordable housing, uh, but that is proposed to be access off of a lot on Dexter Lane, uh, accessing a piece of backland on one of the house lots that fronts on High Street. Um, that's within the um, high speed overlay district that is intended to largely protect those lots in the nature of development that that area. So um, obviously on my radar is the um, our status um, under the affordable housing statutes and St. Barbara and so forth. And uh, that project, whether it comes forward in the coming months or. What's our percentage of, uh, what, what is our relative percentage of the 40B of we, affordable housing? We are not at 10% right now. However, we are in a safe harbor because we produce units in the, yeah. particularly in the 40 yard district. Um, Thank you folks. Um, and we got substantial leverage because they are all rental units that Minko has been building. We yeah. get all credit for those units, even though only 25% are affordable, we get we credit get for all, them. right, all the units that they build. Um, and even, even with their having pulled permits or going through the process to keep going on to the Route 1 project they have after 3 Boston Way, um, we still don't necessarily maintain our safe harbor status beyond March of next year. Um, and so I've been you know, trying to flag it as something we need to talk about what there's certain things the city can do within its limits. Um, but obviously, to some degree, developers would be bringing forward projects that would be eligible for permitting 
that would potentially contribute to the affordable housing stock and maintain safe harbor status. So that because this board would be acting, and I think it's it's prior to my time. I think it may you were here. I think when the yeah. Um, the last 40 D project yeah. was imposed. <laughs> I was saying um, that was behind the Woodman Way. Um, right. You know, that's, oh my. Mariner, was it Mariner's Landing? Uh, Maritime's Maritime Landing, Landing, yeah. Yeah, that was when I first right. came forward back, 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 <laughs> in, back in 2001. Right. No, 2001, no, two. So rewind is sort of revisit maybe something like that, a very, you know, different type of 40 meter project. We obviously had heard from NED and Avalon, you know, some time ago about a project in Waterfront West and whether or not a 40 B would be used uh, and permitting for that. But in either case, um, you know, while I am a supporter of affordable housing, I do have concerns about 40 B in the sense that it throws all zoning out the window and the context uh, is maybe less relevant for consideration by this board, which would have to issue a comprehensive permit. So that being the case, um, I think it's important for us to have the appropriate leverage to review projects under um, the 40B statutes, irrespective of you know whether zoning is in play. Um, so we'll be looking to update the regulations that you have on 40B between now and then. But um, I would not say that that alone is sufficient to, um, I, there are other avenues that are better for us to be uh, addressing um, things like safe harbor. And so if you have quite further questions, well, we're happy to have talk offline, you know, uh, if you want to reach out to us. but. Um, that's something I've just thrown across your radar is update the regulations. I know we had talked about that some time ago. We put a little bit on the back burner. Um, we will be focused on that given the time frame going into the next spring. Um, but in any event, I do I have had discussions with the mayor and others. Um, you know, we will have to work as best we can within the tools we have to try to generate new units that are permitted um, to try to maintain our our status and either show progress each year of approximately forty five units. You, know, you know, roughly depending on the census numbers they end up using or we're still waiting for the to confirm the numbers they're going to use but um but up roughly 45 units you know so to speak to gain a year um twice that to gain two years but the question of how, how many units we need to reach 10 percent is uh will be determined once we hear from dhcd about the uh unit numbers that they're using for our inventory so, so when does our safe harbor expire next year march 2nd i believe march 2nd of next year Correct. unless there's another project in you know in, in june uh, at the correct permitting right. stage so we've talked i mean there are you know there's only limited city property available to do it directly so brown school obviously has been you know some discussions for some time and i wouldn't necessarily expect that to resolve itself in time to have you know permitting of units um may go you know may have other projects that are doing you know you know other parties may come forward but this is the only 40B project that's been, you know, suggested recently. Andy, um, this could be a conversation offline too, but it, it reminds it, when we talk about like city property, um, the short inventory that's left, um, there's there's the kind of uh, active discussions on a possible land swap between the, the developer. Uh, yeah. On oh, this particular project? Yeah. Do you, do you know what that, do you know? What yeah. I mean, I, I don't necessarily see any avenue. And I, when I did explain to the attorney uh, when he came in to meet with us informally, you know, a few weeks back about this, I, I did not see any viability. In, and again, I defer to the city council and the mayor and something like that, but I didn't see any viability for them to come forward and ask the city and through the city council to um, give permission to go across city property, essentially to provide access to the development that is ostensibly inconsistent with the zoning for the district. Yeah. Um, so irrespective of whether or not, you know, it's got, it seems like this project still is also those some geotech properties, right? And access and ingress obstacles as well as themselves. Well, they, there are some questions about the plans that they propose. And there's, you know, a question we always have these discussions about open space residential developments, whether or not the developer has proposed a uh, sufficiently as of right plan to use as a comparison for their alternative. Um, here, there's some questions that we actually push their plan back to them and said, you know, give us, you know, a, a legible plan that we can evaluate in a little bit more detail, given that they're presenting that as a baseline with the affordable housing trust, for at least for discussion purposes. Um, so we can't fairly say that that's an as of right plan or concept plan. A again, it's not the same unit count or anything. It's a you know, slightly different scenario. But um, bottom line, I guess, is um, I'm not sure that that's an as of right plan per se, but um, but it, it would not necessarily be consistent with the zoning, I think. Uh, and so here they'd be looking for concept uh, comprehensive permit to allow essentially 60 units um, back there in, in an area where we normally would not be allowing that. Did you say 16 or 16? 16. 16. 16. Yeah, sorry. No, no, no. That. I, I should have been a little bit more. Uh, All right. No, I thought it was 16. I was 16. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. All right. So um, we'll keep you informed, but I plan on us at least at a bare minimum coming back to you and, you know, the months with updated regulations for consideration. We're working with KP to have them review it. But um, again, that's just to make sure belts and suspenders are at least up to date as best we can. Yeah. Thank you, Director Port. Um,
Nothing further. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I just want to make one. I, yeah, sure. You asked me to attend a meeting last Thursday. I went to the first jobs fair oh, yeah, for uh, yeah. town you. boards, and I, I manned the zoning board appeals table. Did you? So you had any pledges? We had four people who <laughs> wanted to sign up. And as soon as they heard we had no openings, most of them went over to the planning board table where they had openings. But anyway, it was fun. I, I appreciate. I mean, yeah, I, and, <laughs> I knew that. Like, it's just. I think it's just out of solidarity that we. You know, oh yeah, man, the schedule. Schedule. Play. You know, we would. It would be like, you know, our, you know, our, our fraternity is full. No more. You know, yeah. No more rush. Yeah. But um, but it's important because we're, you know, this is a rarity in my my tenure on the board, as, as we just mentioned, goes back to 02. Um, we were always on the hunt for, you know, willing, dedicated, you know, and available and qualified people. And the qualified is really sort of like an anyone, you know, hard to find that. But we were like, you know, we were we were we were revising that qualification to like, you know, if you, you know, if you have a heartbeat and, and get to City Hall, we'd love to, you know, love to have you. But um, this is a rarity that we have a full board with, with full, you know, um, associate, you know, uh, membership. So that we can actually function without having to let down on it. And it hasn't been this way recently, but I've been in rooms that were literally like you would think they were giving away money. Yeah. And I was in you know the council chambers and people were spilling out into and down the hall. Um, you know, standing room only on applications like um, Mission Oak, um, you know, of that of the church and other, you know, big, you know, the, the wind turbine. Um, the report bank and other like giant sort of like big attention applications people were spilling out the doors and it's hard if there's a conflict as there often is because we all live in the world and if, if we fall below that quarter now all of a sudden we all look bad and we can't conduct this business and um you know and it just uh it's good to have you, you, you know I, I can tell you i haven't had a board uh, this functional and thoughtful and respectful and profession, you know, to disagree without being disagreeable is a rare thing to do. So I certainly appreciate it. Um, thank you for manning that table. And then we adjourn. Let's get out of here. <laughs> you know, well, we were about to, we, we had to, you know, we want to hear about the pleasure. He had heard about it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. All, is that all in favor? Do we have all in favor? All in favor? Oh, aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. There you go. Always <laughs> Yeah. Now you could like capture that significantly for uh, for now. What's that? A lot of.